Hey, Taken. This is Mika. Here at Leak Taken, I talk about all things witchy, craft related, law of attraction, esoteric, manifesting, and everything else in between. <laughs> Messed that up. But you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and hopefully you'll enjoy this topic today. Today, I want to talk about Maiden Mother Crone and that entire concept. And I've been thinking about this because we are a society who wants to stay forever maiden. We don't even want to go into mother. You are mothers. You are a crone. And you don't want to become... <laughs> We're like resistant to that. So that's what this video is about. Um, not just me ranting about that, although that might be included. But it's also about not wanting to, or more or less learning how to, accept where we are. It, it, the phase of life. You know, it's, a, it's all cyclical. We Things are, you know, all of this. So... You're gonna be, you're gonna get full circle, and you know if you're lucky enough uh, to live well and live long and healthy, and you know that's a great thing. That's a beautiful thing. That's life, the circle of life. <laughs> um, what I would suggest on this topic is know yourself, know thyself. Where are you? I'll tell you about me. I know I'm still in the mother phase, mate, mother, crone, mother phase. But I am going to be approaching Crone shortly. Um, I, in the next, I guess, few to five years or so, I guess I would be considered Crone. Um, and to me, I it's based on, you know, probably when I would start menopause, that whole process, That's that to me would represent, at least from the um, physical aspect of going into the Crone phase, mentally, possibly before then or around that time. Well, well no, it's, it's a transition. So it's not like one day you wake up and say, I'm the mother or I'm the crone. You could be a teenage mom. doesn't put you in the mother and face. You're just a teenage mom. Okay? <laughs> anyway, um, know who you are. And let me tell you why that's important. There are, I think a lot of us women, that is, and, and this is all women of any walks of life and complexion, ethnicity, whatever. I think a, there's there's a crisis going on with an identity complex of what it means to be woman. Now, my definition may not fit yours. That's cool. But there is still the concept of femininity. And that doesn't matter if you are, you know, um, someone who identifies not as female. We all have men have feminine aspects as well. This is okay. It's not the end of the world, people. It's okay. But if you are a woman, regardless of your sexual orientation, who wants to express the feminine, it's paramount, paramount excuse me, that you know the phase that you're in. Because how you express the feminine does reflect on the phase you represent. Maiden is going to be a lot more childish, childlike. And that's okay because the crone might exhibit some of that behavior, be playful. That's okay. But the amount of childlike, childishness, I should say, um, girlishness, we'll say that, or um, a little, you know, more innocence, you know, wide eyed about everything, open, very open. Um, Mostly because they're, they're, for lack of a better word, still spiritually and knowledge-wise, still sort of, uh, their vessel is still empty because, you know, they got this lifetime to fill, to fill it and to, to you know, use that for different purposes, you know, as they approach mothering phase. And, um, once they're in mothering phase, and of course, once they're crone, you know, they become a library. So when you're expressing the feminine, your femininity, I'll say that, you're going to want to know your face. Uh, so we talk maiden. So, you know, the maiden's going to get a pass at the girlishness, the, sil the silliness, if you will. Um, that's, it's endearing, it's sweet, you know, innocent. Uh, mothering, her way that she might express is going to be more nurturing. Um, a lot more deeper, uh, deeper levels of love because she now has the ability uh, to create life and it you know she knows love is infinite it's um it can you know she can 
you know, it doesn't matter who who's in her family, her circle, her pets, her plants, the people, you know, the land. It's that nurturing aspect um, that comes alive in that mothering phase, and it it is all it. it it kind of uh, takes over all aspects of the life, whether it's your career, whether it's you know your marriage, the children, like I said, taking care of your pets, um, or just relationships in general, or even your way of looking at the world. You know, they'll become you know maybe vegan, they'll become um, eco conscious, all of that. You know, and then they're influencing others um, because they don't care; they care about you caring because that whole nurturing side. So it's a lot of time spent in service. So femininity in that way is going to be, you know, giving, receiving as well, but a lot of giving and being more receptive and, and a little bit more serious than the maiden um, on expressing femininity, but still playful at times, of course, you know, we're women, we, you know, feminine, we, do, we still be playful. Uh, but it's a little bit more serious, a little bit more um, intentional. It's, it's not by accident, a little less gameplay going on. Um, you, you know, sh the feminine, the, and we're not just, I'm not just talking about sex, I meant just the way things are, are get across because she becomes to be a little bit more intellectual and she has a little bit more understanding of the way the world works and how people work because of all that nurturing. So that's the mother phase as far as expressing femininity. Now, when we get into the crone phase, Okay, she got it. The crumb phase, you know, it's not about elderly. It's, it's more about knowledge, you know. She's, she knows the maiden. She knows the mother aspect. And she knows the transitional pieces in between. And now she has it all in, in her vessel. Her not, the knowledge is there. So she's going to be able to interact a lot more confidently. Um, She's going to be your teacher, your elder, and I mean elder, you know, in someone you look at, maybe in an organization, church, or, you know, some sort of spiritual group. Um, she's, she has it a little bit more together. It doesn't mean she don't make mistakes and she's still not learning. It's just that she's attained some experience, the knowledge through experiences that the rest of them just haven't gotten yet. They're still building it. So she's able to apply that, at least if she's aware. And when she's doing so, she knows how to come across a little bit more feminine. And she also knows when to exude certain aspects of herself to make the point or to explain or, or to get better understanding or to hold back because you don't need to know. So she'll give you a certain aspect to, to maybe throw you off because she's smart enough to know how to do that because she's learned. <laughs> and that is a very feminine uh characteristic just being observant paying attention um taking all those other aspects and spinning it together and you know using it um using it well <laughs> so that would be uh your chrome so this is why i think it's important to know where you stand where where are you and and claim it own it you know really own up to it and i will go back to this we can't stay maidens we can't stay young, wide-eyed, innocent, empty vessels of knowledge waiting to be filled up by experiences. At some point, you are transitioning from that phase. You might be living a life of um, denial because you're not there anymore, but you're struggling you know, with leaving that phase. And there, I think there are a lot of adult women who are struggling with that, who are struggling with owning up to who they are, knowing who they are, and, and openly claiming who they are. Watch TV. <laughs> I don't watch reality shows, um, but you see clips and you see things they talk about in social media, um, interviews and things like that. Watch, just watch it. You can see, I, I think it's the Housewives franchise in particular. I used to watch all of them, so I'm familiar to some degree. For years I watched them, and then it reached the point, when they got to the point, I think it was the Atlanta one years ago, um, looks like it, things was going to get physical. Any other ones that were starting to get physical? This is after Teresa flipped the table. When the Jersey Housewives, I was watching them. 
because uh, it was still new. I was and I'm from Jersey. I wanted to know, but to look at those women, um, they were not that. They were not maidens. <laughs> they were not maidens. So the point is, um, they exhibit behavior of the maiden, and a lot of them were mothers and crones. Um, I think the word crone probably scares people because it sounds like an old decrepit old lady, you know, um, an old crone. You know, you hear that's a slur. It's something negative and mean. Uh, she's a wise woman, that crone. And for some reason, you know, people settle for mothering, but they still want to be made. Even, everything in our society is almost set up for it. You know, the beauty industry, um, the entertainment, you know, they always want the young actresses, fresh new young face. Um, the older actresses get, it's hard for them to get work sometimes, unless, you know, unless they're really old and they play the old lady, you know. But the point is, it's, it's really difficult um, in our society to be accepting of this concept when media, you know, commercialism, all of that, it, it just tells you differently. It tells you that, you know, you should fear being the crone. You're less desirable. Um, you're not sexy. You're not feminine. And that's actually not true. As someone who's knocking on the door of the crone, um, I'm, you know, I could look down and I say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm on my way there. I, I don't feel as I'm transitioning over time that I, I'm going to be less sexy um, or less anything. I'm, I'm more of me. I'm more confident. I'm more of me. That's, you know, you, you, we have to do this. And it sounds like, um, like you're telling yourself something just so you can believe it. And, you know, the rest of the world doesn't. So what? You're telling yourself something so you believe in the rest of the world doesn't. You can't live for what the rest of the world thinks. Otherwise, a lot of us wouldn't even be practicing any sort of magic, witchcraft, or anything. Um, so throw that concept out the window, right? Um, about being afraid of the crone. <laughs> Outside of, you know, being told to be afraid of getting old in our society, you know, that would be reason why. And, you know, because getting old means death. So it's the end. So you want to stay young forever, that way you don't die. I understand that. And I used to think about that when I was younger. Not that deeply, but I did think about it. You know, I, I, I you know, it would sometimes, um, conversations about death would give me serious anxiety. My heart would race. Um, sometimes I would sweat. I would get a stomach ache. I would get serious anxiety about death. At some point, I want to say probably about 40, somewhere around 40. The concept of death, I could think a complete thought about my own death without freaking out. And since then, it's to the point now, I look for places I would, you know, how, how I would be buried, basically my arrangements. And I discuss this openly with the people in my family, you know, my children and my husband, um, although I don't want to go before him. I, it just doesn't seem right. I'm younger than him. Yeah, I don't think I'm supposed to. And I really genuinely try to take care of myself. I would kind of be pissed off if I had went before him. Because he doesn't always follow the stuff I tell him to do to stay healthy. So it would be like a slap in the face and he would be right. And, you know, I'm not comfortable with that even in death, by the way. That's what it's like being married for years, guys. Welcome. Anyway, um, I know that getting older is inevitable and like i was saying earlier not everybody gets the luxury of getting older because you know you freaking might die young um so this is a, gr a good thing guys we need to look at this within our culture within our society as a good thing that you get to get older you get to get older you get to live longer and that's a great concept as far as living your witchy life <laughs> Um, throughout the maiden mother, maiden mother crone phase. What I would say about that is this. Practice your magic, do your spells, you know, um, make your charms, whatever, do who, do, do it all. Let me tell you why. You don't want to be an old woman with regrets. 
You don't want to be the crone with regrets. You don't want to be the elder with regrets of what could have happened, what you should have done. You won't look back most likely say you should have cast that spell, but there will be things you'll look back and wish you have done. I have had opportunity to be around someone um, who was my elder, very much my elder, decades older than me. And um, I see them living a life of regret. They're not mean all the time. It's not like they're, you know, just a horrible person um, to be around. No, but it comes out. The bit, it's a little bit of bitterness seeps out. Uh, but they live because they didn't do the things probably in hindsight, in hindsight that they know they should have at least tried to do. Uh, by living in a state of fear of what if it doesn't work or what are they going to say, what are they going to say? Um, or just having debilitating self-esteem issues that they just won't even move forward with the idea that they could do something different uh, than everyone around them. So for me, that's just an advertisement to practice witchcraft. Honestly, that's how I think. Because practicing witchcraft, being pagan, opening myself up to the spiritual realm, understanding, um, you know, universal law, you know, just being open and receptive to things that maybe I didn't have language for, because although I kind of sensed these things were there, being open to just concepts that I hadn't even thought about, uh, I hadn't imagined, just being open has changed my life so over these more than a decade now that I've been practicing. Um, my life has changed. My view of the world has changed. I don't fear death. It's hard to fear death when you talk to the dead, <laughs> when you commune with the dead. Um, and they validate and you know it's them and they tell you only things that you know they wouldn't, you know, that you both know. <laughs> um, it's difficult to be afraid. So that was life changing. I mean, I'm having anxiety attacks over the concept of death. So, you know, it was, if people are going to die around me, I'm going to die. You know, everybody's going to die eventually, hopefully in our old age, in our home phase. <laughs> Um, it's inevitable. So we have to come to terms with it. And if we don't want to come to terms with it, it's going to make our exiting or transition into that phase. I think uh, from a spiritual perspective, even more difficult, which is why we have to know who we are, what phase we're in and own it. And don't be afraid of what's to come. Um, the death part is more or less, a lot of people just fear of the unknown, but you know the crone phase. But if you think of it in a negative sense, you'll fear it. You'll hate it. You won't want it because you're afraid. Because if you think that um, people who, you know, you know, once women, women specifically reach that phase that they're, like I said, less desirable or less something, um, yeah, you're going to struggle. If you are a man and you struggle with the concept of seeing someone, a woman in that phase as someone who is of value, um, you may struggle as well because the as you age, your peers are going to age too. The people you come up with and you know you hung with and hopefully if you fostered and had those friendships, all y'all going to be old together. <laughs> you know, you're all going to be in this stage together um, if you're lucky. And you need to accept that because these are people you love, women you love, you know, and it's a whole different dynamic when it comes to men. I don't even want to get into that right now as far as the male aspect, but mate and mother crone, know where you are so you can act and move about the world accordingly. And also, I just want to caution, know when the transition is occurring uh, to go back from maiden to mothering. I think there's, again, this disconnect. Uh, with women who are very resistant and it affects relationships. I actually think it affects relationships to the point that that's one of the reasons we have such a high divorce rate. There's a lot of other things going on, but I think at heart we have women 
And I don't say that women are the cause, don't get me wrong, because men are also in this mindset, kind of hook line, you know, with them, um, of this for, you know, forever young, um, not understanding you, you transition now, you're, you can't be that way anymore. It's time to, to take the, the knowledge you've been learning over this time and apply it to this new phase as you're still open to learn more. You can't be childish all the time. <laughs> you know, it's you're not a child anymore. It's time to move on. And it's time to, you know, straighten up and express your femininity in a different way. It's time to bring your strength that you've hopefully gained um, and honed over these years and apply it to the child rearing, to, you know, the career, to uh, the creative endeavors, to the grown-up relationships, hopefully, that you've now encountered, that you're now uh, experiencing. It's time to transition. Um, we have so many young women who don't want to, and I, I don't know if we failed them, us older folk, <laughs> Uh, the older ones, if we failed them, I have a 23 year old daughter. Um, I don't know. I, you know, I'm, we try to be supportive of her, but I also encourage her to strike out on her own, do certain things on her own, know how to deal with complex relationships. And I think I did a pretty good job because she surprises me at times. Um, but if you are dealing with a situation where you kind of look in-house and you look around you, or if you are the 23-year-old and you're looking in and saying, hey, I don't think I have a handle on this, don't beat yourself up about it. It doesn't mean you won't get there. But the first step of sort of moving forward is being aware. Um, baby, you transitioning from, you know, maiden. You don't have to have babies and children to be in the mother phase, by the way. It's It's... The concept of nurturing, of nurturing, and like I said, nurturing, whether it's nurturing your career, further education, um, it's when life gets a little bit more serious. That's not a bad thing, by the way, because you have to sort of get more focused, have a little bit more focus then, because you probably have more responsibilities then, so you got to be serious sometimes, right? So that's pretty much all I have about this. It's just something... Um, I've been thinking about as I look around and I look at uh, the behavior of, of women and women who I think are my age who exhibit um, characteristics of a maiden intentionally uh, and under the guise of, you know, why do I have to act a certain way just because I'm this age? I can act how I want. Of course you can. And showing aspects of the maiden, remember, she is still part of you you've gained that knowledge. So you know how to turn that on and off. The, the key is turning it on and off. It's not perpetually trying to stay a maiden and act accordingly. So basically immaturity, uh, struggling with relationships, men and, you know, or um, we're going to say intimate relationships, uh, having unrealistic expectations, almost as a girl would, a girl, not an owl, a girl, um, as a girl would think, just unrealistic expectations, um, on the relationship, not just the person, but what you think the relationship means, uh, ignoring uh, red flags repeatedly, those that's what an innocent, wide-eyed young girl does because she doesn't know any better. But a 40-year-old woman, she should know a little bit more by now. And she, she does know, but she's choosing not to apply it because she wants to keep in her maiden innocent, wide-eyed, you know, looking to be filled with knowledge, uh, you know, not owning what she's already, what she already has. So those are actually my final thoughts. I don't want to go, you know, for a full-blown tangent about that, but I think every, if you're watching this, you get what I'm talking about. Just look at reality TV. Um, the, the housewives of Atlanta come to mind, but, um, the OC girls too. Um, I, I watched it for that was the first one I ever watched. So those come those are great examples for this. Watch them and see how these women who you know are 40 plus act. And I don't think they just do it for the camera because a funny thing happens when you're constantly doing something all the time, it becomes 
almost routine, almost ritual. And um, then it just becomes who you are. So, hmm, enough about that. <laughs> Thank you for watching. This is Mika. Again, I'm here at Leave Taken. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please like the video. And if you haven't already subscribed, it'd be really great if you did. If you want to, of course. But thank you for watching. Bye-bye.